I love my Pico and Pico 2s, but I do see beginners get bored quite quickly. Until you're comfortable with building quite complex peripheral circuits, then everything just seems to be about flashing an LED. How about we start with a pin compatible board that already has an LCD display on board? Let's explore. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. If that sounds like your kind of adventure, hit subscribe and join the community. So the WaveShare RP2350 LCD 0.96 is a Raspberry Pi Pico format board, which is just 21 by 51 millimeters. Into that space, WaveShare have crammed an 80 by 160 pixel LCD display, plus the ability to run from a battery too. So instead of starting and ending your learning with blinking LED, we can actually build some little display projects. If this video inspires you or helps your learning, or your projects indeed, consider dropping me a tip using that super thanks button below the video, or alternatively, there's a payment link in the description. It helps me keep the channel going and keeps me off the streets too. Though there are similarities with these WaveShare displays, everyone is a little bit different, and this one certainly is. I mean, this really does look just like a Pico with a 21 by 51 millimeter uh, board. Uh, and then it's got this nice little display on there with 80 by 160 pixels. So let's take a look at the hardware spec. So we've got this little board. It's got that 80 by 160 pixels display on it. it isn't huge, but it's quite nice to play with. It's got a battery input and a DC to DC converter for that battery input as well. And of course there's boot cell and reset switches on board so that we can program it. And we've got a Pico pinout. So it's got the pins in exactly the same place as a Pico or Pico 2, which is quite useful. And there's also a SWD touch pads on there for a single wire debug. Now, if you have a look at the pinout, you'll notice that although it's exactly the same as a Pico, there are some pins that are already used to drive the LCD screen. And we probably should avoid those uh, unless you really know what you're doing. So that's something to be a little bit careful of on this. We have plenty of pins though to do something like connect up an RM2 module to give this board Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity if you wanted to make it into an IoT device or web service client, which would work really, really nicely. And of course, we've got those SWD touch pads, so we can theoretically program this from a Raspberry Pi debug probe. And certainly I have, though I must admit, because they're touch pads rather than proper um, through connector points, that is a little bit more tricky to solder to. And being touch pads, I can't actually use them as touch pads because they're on the bottom of the board, which is generally plugged straight into my breadboard. So I, I would have preferred these to actually be a, a socket of some sort. WaveShare gives a nice lot of demos with this uh, product so that we can see how the code works to control the board. Now those demos do actually use external electronics and they haven't entirely been clear in the description and the documentation of what that electronics is, which is a little bit frustrating. But still, we have the factory demo, we have uh, a, a LCT demo, which looks like it's some sort of game and would take some sort of input, and we've got an LVGL demo too, which will do graphical components on the screen. Now the board ships with three libraries to control it an LCD library, a configuration library, and LVGL. Now the LCD library and the config library really are working together. That gives you the base control over this board and the ability to actually put things on the display. So, you know, the LCD driver really controlling the chip itself and the config showing how that chip is actually controlled and interfaced into the RP2350. And then we've got LVGL on here. So LVGL is a GUI library I've used a lot on some of my other projects. Uh, it's really, really nice. It, this version is 8.1.0, which is a little older. 
Uh, on the version 8 series, we're up to 8.4. And I think you could actually jump this forward to 8.4 and get things to work fairly easily. Porting it to one of the version 9 versions of LVGL, I think that would be a little bit trickier. Of course, I've taken this board for a full spin and tried out these libraries. And you can see my examples over on this repo on GitHub. So this is my little repo project here for our, an example using this board. And I set this up in perhaps a slightly complicated way because I've set this up to allow me to run multiple experiments, which means the libraries I've got here are going to be shared. And I've put them there for right at the very top, whereas I've got a couple of projects potentially down in inside my experiment folder. And the libraries I've copied here are straight from the WaveShare example. So I've just taken over their LCD driver, their configuration library, and their version of LVGL. The way I'm then pulling those libraries into my code um, is not quite how our friends at WaveShare do it. I've, I've changed the structure a little bit. So I've got a RP2350 LCD library which actually contains both that config and LCD driver. And that's set up here as a CMake import that I can uh, just get going. And then I've got one for LVGL as well. And this is quite consistent in what I use in a number of projects. Now, they, those are kind of clever because they will sort of assume that the library is inside your project, inside a lib folder. If they don't, if unless of course you've defined a variable to tell it it's elsewhere. And because I'm using these uh, libraries in a sort of shared model, I need to tell it some, they're somewhere else. And that's what these two sets do in my top left one make file. Um, everything else is pretty much the same here. We're, we're assuming and setting this to be a standard Pico 2 board. So the code itself um, is actually just really two pieces of code. We've got our main program that I initialize all of the board and get everything up and running, and then widgets. Widgets is what's gonna do all of the graphics and all of the GUI components. So main is actually pretty consistent from project to project. And uh, this is the uh, main necessary to initialize this a 96.96 inch LCD display. So it basically initializes the module itself. Uh, it then actually it's gonna set everything to white. It's going to create some structures for LVGL before initializing LVGL. And then it's gonna call widgets. And widgets is what's gonna actually kick everything off. Now, I should say that there is one other key component in this project to make all of that work, and that's this port folder here. And port basically holds the glue that connects LVGL to our display. So a lot of the other annoying little bits of code that lie around in the WaveShare examples, I've actually put here in my port display code. And that's where that LVG in it function is, is written that will actually just connect everything together and get it all up and running. The other key bit there is LVGL configuration and that really just sets up how LVGL is going to work in this board and it also turns on important things like which font we have available to us. So I've got um, 14 and 16 point fonts available to me for this particular project. Right, so with port explained, let's go back to our code. So everything really to actually do the GUI is about what's in widgets. And widgets is really simple structure. It's just going to uh, run initialization to create everything up. And that's going to basically do use some of this private stuff down here. So they're basically the structure of where is the tile I'm working with on my display? Where are the labels? Where is the, um, the arcs that I'm going to animate? And how is that timer running? And that's all it is really. So if we have a look at our uh, code over here, 
initialization, what I'm actually doing in this example is I am creating a tile viewer. Now, in th on this particular board and this project, I probably don't need to. I could have just put everything actually in this top level container, which is actually the display itself. But, but when I've done this on other platforms, I've always put it on a tile. So I copied that and I've continued to do that. So then to set up our first tile, we use the tile view add tile and we're going to create our first tile. And this tile we can then set up a, a um, tile style for and then create a label style. And that label style is going to refer back to our font. We talked about fonts and their configuration in LVGL a minute ago. Um, so we're going to use that font 16 and we're going to give it a color as well. I'm also going to create um, some information about the display and its horizontal and vertical resolution. I'm going to need that later because I'm going to just dynamically choose where things are located. <clears throat> and then the first bit of code we're going to run on this, uh, this is really to put a label, a little bit of text really, on the screen. And that's the, all of this code. It does seem quite a lot, but it is pretty simple. All we're doing is really creating the label and setting some parameters on it, including what is the text we want it to display. So we tell it how we want it to wrap that text, what we want its width size to be, what we um, want the alignment of the text inside that space, inside the label space to be, whether we want left justified, right justified, center justified, and then the actual position of the label itself. And that's all going to be set up there. And, we're, and finally, we apply our style, the one we defined earlier, so the font size and the color uh, as well to our label. So that will get some text sitting there on the right hand side of our display. And then I'm going to create some arcs that I'm going to animate. And these are basically going through this loop to create them. So each arc is going to be slightly uh, smaller radius. So I'm changing the size of the arcs and we're just reducing those down. And then uh, I'm turning off some of the annoying bits on these arcs as well, like the, um, the, the knob part, because I don't want to use them as sort of um, dials or anything. I just want it to be a pure arc. And then I'm going to set the colors and they're going to be rainbow colors across the six arcs that I've got here. And finally, I can kick off a timer. Um, the timer is going to call a static function on our class called the timer callback. And then it's also going to pass some user data, which is going to be a reference to this actual object. Because one of the things with C functions and callbacks and linking that through to our C++ code and objects code is going from that uh, function space into object space and how we do that. And this is a pattern I use all the time to do that. So when I call the callback and when that comes in on the static side, I've got to access some user data, which is going to be the object itself. And so that's what that line is doing, is just extracting out the object that we've passed in in user data. And then I can use that to call a member function on the object side of this uh, item called timer handler. And timer handler is what is actually going to do the animation. And it's basically just going through and changing the angle of each of our ob objects. And I'm making uh, the um, odd ones rotate one direction and the even ones rotate the other direction so that we get a nice sort of interacting pattern as they all rotate around. And they have slightly different starting positions, which means that everything doesn't seem to go round uh, in a, a bizarre sort of way. So there, there was actually the angles were stored there. Honestly, setting up and getting this demo running on this board was actually really quite easy probably easier than getting the camera to actually not focus hunt as it's doing all the time on the screen. Should this board be your first Pico? 
I'm close to recommending it actually, but there are two reasons that I think it should be perhaps your second board rather than your first. Firstly, and most importantly, our journey to working with the Pico and Pico 2 and any ecosystem board always starts with Blinky, i.e. being able to blink that LED. And there is no LED on this board. Now that means just about every course and tutorial is going to cause you to stumble on your first project. If only there was a status LED. The second issue, and perhaps less importantly for a beginner, is how the SWD port single wire debug is presented. Having this as test points on the underside of the board is not ideal. I'd rather not have had that battery connector, to be honest, and had an SWD connector on the top instead. Like a Pico H. That way, a new user could move through the boot cell process to using a debug probe for a full tool chain setup. Don't get me wrong, having SWD on any uh, Wayshare board is great. I've reviewed too many of these boards that just don't have it at all. And just for a new user, this could be better. On the upside though, we can build demos that actually display things locally. Time, temperature, switch state, resistance. There are so many upsides to starting here on this board. If this video helps you out or sparks ideas for your own projects, consider supporting me with a super thanks button below the video, or alternatively, there's a payment link in the description. I'm saving these up to get myself over to the open source conference in San Francisco in 2026, and every contribution brings me one step closer. And I'd love to meet some of you there too. My demos for this board uses LVGL library. To do that animation, I've got a video introduction to LVGL that you might also like to watch next.